Good morning, and it is a great privilege to be at the 8th World Congress of the International Religious Liberty Association. I know you're enjoying it as well, and the ep exceptional speakers and presentations. Uh, those who are officially leading IRLA, we give them great thanks, Ambassador Seipel, Ambassador Ney, and a host of others who are filling official areas of capacity, as well as our distinguished guests and presenters. However, I just want to take a moment before we launch into a special emphasis on freedom of conscience, a God-given right. I would like to take a moment and I will not do justice in naming everyone and will even omit their last names, but I want to pay special appreciation to those who behind the scenes create a very impressive Congress such as we are experiencing here. And uh, to Ganun and his team, I want to thank you. Uh, of course, uh, Nello and Duane and Bettina and Gail, uh, Sylvia, Abner, and Daisy, and then the North American branch of IRLA, Orlin and Lincoln and Melissa, Alvin, and so many others. I'd like us to take just a moment and show our appreciation to those working behind the scenes. It is a distinct privilege on behalf of the over 20 million Seventh-day Adventists to be able to share with you a deeply held re religious value that justifies religious freedom. There is a sacred responsibility incumbent on all human beings to respect and honor the right of others to choose what they believe. The freedom of choice was provided at the very beginning of life when God created human beings in his image. Now, you need to know that Seventh-day Adventists believe in the biblical explanation of the creation of this world and its living inhabitants. In fact, many of you have referenced or even seen the most recent demonstration just a couple days ago of God's incredible handiwork when there was a total eclipse of the sun by the moon. Nancy and I had the privilege of seeing that. It is spectacular. That's just one indication of God's fingerprints on creation. We believe that creation, as Seventh-day Adventists, we believe that it happened recently, not over millions of years. We believe that a loving God created a perfect world by his word, by fiat. He spoke, and it was done. Part of the blessing of being made in God's image was that we were given the power of choice. This understanding of creation and choice is derived from the authority and power of God himself, which runs directly counter to the current prevailing belief of evolutionary theory or even theistic evolution, both of which ignore the plain reading of Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, where we read in Genesis 1, verses 26 and 28 through 28, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Now, to be made in the image of God changes all humanistic paradigms regarding our origin and our worth. This is the setting from which the sacred freedom of choice originates since God gave Adam and Eve 
the power of choice. Unfortunately, they did not exercise that choice in the right manner, and sin entered into the world. God's redemptive power was put into operation to redeem his creation and bring his creatures back into harmony with his will and ultimately destiny for human beings. So creation in God's image, including the freedom of choice, is at the base of what it means to value religious liberty and to exercise it with respect from all and for all. This was emphasized greatly in the Protestant Reformation being commemorated this very year, 500 years ago, where it was recognized that the just shall live by faith and that we are saved by grace, giving us the power of choice to accept or not accept God's gracious gifts and ensure liberty of conscience. Now, in general, societies that have developed a comprehensive approach to religious liberty and freedom of conscience are safer, more progressive, and have a greater opportunity for development. This comprehensive approach does not only provide for an intellectual understanding, but covers the entire range of life, including areas that God wants developed, physical, mental, social, and, of course, spiritual. Morality in society comes from a deeper understanding of our origins, as we have reviewed it from Scripture and provides for religious liberty and freedom of conscience coming from a set of principles beyond normal ethical theories and accepted moral values of different cultures and religions. As a Seventh-day Adventist Christian, I personally believe it comes from the moral principles provided as the Bible defines them in the Ten Commandments. The principle of respect for God respect for creation and the environment, respect for family and parents, respect for property, respect for human beings and their dignity. Yes, respect for religious liberty originate in God's holy word and should constitute the life commandments that underpin a healthy society, thus giving us religious freedom and the hope for peaceful coexistence. Ellen G. White, a leading founder of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the book entitled Education, page 17 in English, indicates the following. Every human being created in the image of God is endowed with a power like that of the Creator, individuality, power to think and do. It is the work of true education to develop this power to train youth to be thinkers and not mere reflectors of other men's thoughts. You see, the moral imperative to follow in the image of God and promote eternal values motivates us to do something meaningful both in our lives and in society, and thus helping to preserve and promote freedom of conscience and religious liberty. If a society and the spiritual, biblical, and moral principles are missing in that society, or if they are misapplied or misinterpreted, then society will not develop properly and freedom of conscience will be at peril. Witness. The terrible violence at the hands of dangerous elements of society, whether they be in Charlottesville, North Carolina, not far from here, and I must say that fascism, Nazism, supremacist values have absolutely no connection with religious liberty and with a coexistence of peaceful understanding of what religious liberty is all about. When we, th
When we think of the terrible violence, misguided applications of cultural and of religious principles that have taken the lives of people in Barcelona and in Cambrils, in Spain, and in countless other places around the world. And let me make a clear point here. We only hear in the global news information that seems to surface in a way that the media wishes us to hear about it. There are countless other atrocities that take place every day that we hear nothing about. And yet we must champion those who are unfortunate recipients of these horrible atrocities by our lives and our examples. Yes, we can make statements. I've already put a statement on my official Facebook page regarding some of these atrocities. We can make statements. We can pronounce various things that are perhaps politically correct in their sound. I want to tell you the greatest challenge is for each of us to live out the principles of peaceful coexistence and religious liberty, promoting things for the price of liberty, and I might say religious liberty, is eternal vigilance. It is a great privilege to see here at this Congress leaders from around the world, and I have met many of you and I appreciate your presence here, who are committed to the nurturing of peaceful coexistence and creating an environment of good moral understanding to foster the heaven-given blessing of religious freedom for all nations and societies in peaceful coexistence. Thank you to each of you for what you are doing for the good of society and the cause of religious liberty through your activities, your personal statements, and most importantly, your actions. Seventh-day Adventist Church members are active in approximately 215 countries of the world, hoping to make this world a better and peaceful place. The comprehensive nature of our understanding of freedom of conscience and its origins helps us to promote healthful principles, including vegetarian diet, importance of physical exercise, a life without narcotics, tobacco, or alcohol, outreach to those less fortunate, defending the dignity of the human being, championing religious liberty causes regardless of a person's belief, and a moral and spiritual focus on living through connection to God and His Word. And I might add that as Seventh-day Adventists, we have a unique perspective on what will happen in the future and the prophetic understanding from Scripture as to how the world will end. Until that time, God asks us and requires us to be strong proponents of peaceful coexistence and helping people in dire situations, especially with religious liberty. Our focus on allowing God to work within our lives physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually provides for a life of trust in the Creator. Thus, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is directly involved in the promotion of health, education, civic and community improvement, and spiritual values leading to freedom of conscience in peace. As with many others, we believe religious liberty is a fundamental freedom a basic human right. It allows for religious openness, and it is good for the well-being and peace of societies and countries. When each citizen feels accepted in spite of his or her religious or political differences, when their rights are protected, it makes a huge difference. God's government in heaven is the model that earthly governments should be patterned after. There is religious liberty in God's government. As an example of Jesus' conversation with the rich young man in the book of Matthew chapter 19, Jesus told him how he could inherit eternal life. The young man did not like what Jesus said and walked away from eternal life. He had the liberty to do that in God's model. Jesus did not force on him what he would have liked to see in the man's decision.
God gives us the liberty to choose what we would like. Any government must be run by laws. There is punishment for those who break these laws. This is true with both God's government and earthly governments. But each individual is given the freedom to choose whether he or she will abide by those laws. The Apostle Paul in Romans 13 verses 1 to 5 emphasizes the responsibility of earthly governments to enforce their laws. However, when earthly governments incorporate a religious system into their political system, the result is oppression and lack of freedom of conscience and a lack of actual peace. So truly, freedom of conscience bears the signature of a God of love. Seventh-day Adventists see religious liberty and freedom of conscience as part of the great conflict between God and Satan, between good and evil. Seventh-day Adventists believe that this controversy will end in the near future with God as the victor. In the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verses 14 to 17, describes the evil powers as acting according to their nature. They oppress, persecute, and kill those who refuse to worship them, which destroys freedom and peace. On the contrary, people of God proclaim their faith in Jesus, but do not force anyone to worship him. The pioneers of the Seventh-day Adventist Church were very passionate about freedom of conscience, which is the work of religious liberty. They saw it as a value which should be protected. Ellen White, again, a founder of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, indicates in a book called Christian Service, page 162, we are not doing the will of God if we sit in quietude doing nothing to preserve liberty of conscience. I hope none of us will be guilty of that when we leave this Congress, of simply having sat here and then sit wherever we are. God calls for us to get into action and do something for religious freedom. <clears throat> Regardless of the increasing morass of terrorism, Economic inequity, widespread violence, educational disparity, violations of human rights, and lack of religious freedom, we can see the positive aspects of how God will work in a miraculous and powerful way to reach those for whom he has given his life. The effects of all of these terrible atrocities give us an understanding of the combined challenges upon society. Together, under God's guidance, in meetings like this and the resulting positive actions undertaken by all, we can help to improve the level of freedom of conscience and peace. Together, we can find ways to promote freedom of conscience throughout the world defending the development and dignity of the human being in the spirit of respect for religious liberty and personal spiritual values. We can lose religious liberty and freedom of conscience and peaceful coexistence if we do not all defend these values. The Seventh-day Adventist Church believes that fighting religious oppression and defending an individual's right to worship according to his or her conscience, regardless of that person's re religious affiliation, is in everyone's best interest. All individuals have the right to life, liberty, peace, and personal security. The International Religious Liberty Association has advocated these goals to governments, religious entities, and international organizations for many years and will continue to do so. Let me challenge all of those, especially those who are leaders in different parts of the world. Make religious liberty and the Public Affairs and Religious Liberty Department a chief proponent and item on your personal agenda list. It is vital for the church and for individuals around the world. This advocacy takes many forms. 
The advocacy takes many forms, fighting against laws that would inhibit an individual's religious freedom, working to obtain the release of individuals imprisoned for religious reasons. And believe me, there are many, many people who are not enjoying the freedom that you and I enjoy today. We also are to work to obtain the release of individuals from imprisoned situations, supporting the rights of individuals fired from their jobs for following their conscience and many other activities. The IRLA and all of us should strongly believe in religious freedom for all people. A person's conscience, not government, should dictate his or her choice to worship or not to worship. According to the Pew Research Center, 76% of the world's population live in countries where religious freedom does not exist or the laws that protect it are not enforced. Human dignity is not based on purely human characteristics since human dignity and freedom of conscience are natural consequences of the fact that man was created, men and women were created, by a loving God, as we've already emphasized. The whole Bible affirms the value of human life, but it requires the intervention of various forums, such as this one, to defend and uphold human dignity and freedom of conscience. These objectives can only be achieved when we have internal peace, when we are connected to God personally, when we respect ourselves and those around us. For this reason, we must work closely with government, civic, business, educational, health, community, religious, and other various leaders to forge respect for human dignity and freedom of conscience. Therefore, let us be fully engaged in our strong commitment and personal actions to live lives that promote religious liberty, freedom of conscience, and peaceful coexistence. Let us speak and advocate our positions in a winsome manner with grace, conviction, and passion. Let us seek wisdom from heaven to accomplish the great task of championing religious freedom and enlisting the support from government and civic leaders as well as the public. Let us strongly encourage young people to join us in this important pursuit of constant vigilance and action for religious liberty, freedom of conscience, and peaceful coexistence for all. Let me underscore the importance. Engage young people in this great initiative. Freedom of conscience is God's special gift to us. Through his power, let us share this gift through peaceful coexistence in the home, in the community, in the nation, and around the world. Thank you.